it's so weird how all these things I say to you, like uh, the organization, I didn't know nothing about this shit, Lee. You learned this along the way. Yeah, but was it hard for you to break bad habits? Because that's what it's You know what breaks me. bad habits? Two what? things. Losing money breaks bad habits and losing things. Like if you come to me and I don't have the paperwork on you, like the first year I did the podcast, I would always get mad because I would always read the fucking things three times a week. But I never bothered to look at the IOs. Right. I never bothered to look at the dates on them. I just take them for granted. That was two or three times a month, and then I get pissed off when they pay me for one time. I go, well, what about? Look at the IO. Oh, I never took the time to look for IO. So what happened? I lost money. That's how you learn. You learn by getting kicked in the fucking ass. But but at that time, at that point, sometimes it's too late. Like that's that's like everyone always says you learn from failures. That doesn't help someone who's like not 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 mad at you, but everyone says it. Like everyone says that as as you're getting into an entrepreneurial thing, and you're like, well, I don't want to fail. First of all, stop saying entrepreneur. Whatever the word is, stop starting a business. Saying, stop saying that bullshit fucking okay. American word that just makes you stand out like a fucking momo. I'm an entrepreneur. Hey, go fuck your mother. We're all do everywhere. Somebody's got to be helping us, right? You know what I'm saying? So you want to go into business for yourself, right? Yeah. yeah see, so you just got to step up to the fucking pump. I've been in business for myself for 30 fucking years. 25 doing comedy. Well, let's just say 25. Right. Well, okay. So just for your thing, since you said you, you uh, went back and forth when you were starting comedy, like before you really jumped into it, do you think that time period was your not being sure, like being nervous about jumping into... Okay, I was talking to Tommy Easter today, my brother Tommy Easter, and we were talking about a delicate subject about him getting a job and why it's important. And I explained to him when I moved here, I thought I was Johnny Bananas too. And I eventually got a job. You know, people say, oh, well, artists don't get jobs. That's great. That's fucking great. Not when you got a coke habit. Mm -hmm. And you got child support and you're fucking trying to live on people's couches and you want to buy a pair of pants at fucking Ross. You know, when you want to do all these things, you need a fucking job. Right. Okay? Right now, if I took Tom East on the road four times a fucking month, what would he make? What would he make? If I play, if I pay for the plane ticket, he'd make two hundred dollars a week at the club. If I threw him an extra hundred, it cost him fucking. He got he get he get a uh, three hundred a week. That's twelve hundred dollars a fucking month. He's gonna eat one fifty while he's on on the road. You know what I'm saying? So you can't make a living. You can't live on twelve hundred. You can't month, make yeah. a living. You can't make a living unless you come back and you got hundred dollar gigs during the week because you at the store. The improv. You see what they give you at the improv? A seven dollar bill. They give you a five and two singles. At the fucking la comedy store, they give you 15 bucks. And at the Laugh Factory, they give you 25. But you get the check every fucking two weeks. So let's say you do four spots. That means you pick up 100 fucking dollars, okay? You can't make a living right now at this situation. You can't get ahead. You can't put away money. So I told him, I go, go to one of those telemarketing places. They pay 15 bucks an hour on Sunset. Inbound fucking calls. People put ads out in the paper, whatever. And you call this fucking number for a couch or... You know when you call the sleepmatic bed? You ever watch TV and they have the sleepmatic bed? Right, yeah. Call us right now in the next 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. What do you think you call? Uncle Joey. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Are you? I'm a sleepmatic professional. I'm some fucking junkie who can't sleep at night that's going to answer the phone <laughs> for fucking twelve fifty an hour and, and try to sell you a fucking bed. So I explained to him that there's no stigma in this. That right now at this point in his life, he's living in a van. How long? He would have to go on the road for three months and not spend a dime. To get into a fucking apartment. Fuck, yeah. Not spend a dime to get to an apartment in this town. And like I told him, I go, you're not getting into the Taj Mahal. What you're going to do is get a job. This is a plan. And this is the same plan I had. My plan was cut short when my vehicle was towed. You understand me? So now I had to think a little quicker. Thank God I had people like Ralphie May and Josh Wolf that I could sleep on their couch. I always threw them a couple bucks. I, almost, I always helped them out. You show up with a little fucking weed. And everybody helps each other out. But I moved in with Gavin, and I had to give Gavin rent money, and it was a, a couch. I had that because it was a couch and a shower. It wasn't the best sleep in the world. I didn't sleep comfortable. It wasn't great for my lumbar, <laughs> but the fucking options were the street. So it makes your lumbar wakes up fucking perfect. You wake up in tip-top magoo shape and shit. Yeah, when well, it's couch or street. And then after that, you get a roommate situation. And then after that, you meet a girl, and you, you date, and you have a roommate situation, and you move in together, and you save money. And all along the way, you're making little fucking strides, but you don't even know it. You know, like I told him, I go, if you stay out there one more year, you're going to go home. You're going to go home. 
You can only live in a fucking car for so long before it starts to bother you. You know, nobody wants to hire you. You pulled up in your fucking apartment. It smells like a shoe in there. You know, there's vomit. There's foot. And I'm not saying nothing bad about Tommy. I lived in that car also. I lived in my car. So I'm speaking from fucking experience here. So there's things that you don't want to do, but you learn how to adjust. You're going to learn along the way, Lee. But for you to always want to fall with somebody, a part of a team, what team are you fucking talking about? What team are you experiencing? What team do you know that you want to be a part of? Three white dudes that think they're all geniuses, and they haven't done deck. Right. Yeah, they sure. haven't done deck. They haven't done deck. You've been here since day one. You came to me for fucking three months ago. You should, you should start your own podcast. You should really start your own podcast. You've been here since day one. Nine offices. 18 different conglomerations, computers, wiring, CDs, boxes, live podcasts, podcasts at a coffee shop. You want to name a fucking few? So all these things, they haven't done all these fucking things. So what are they going to say to you at a meeting? When you're sitting there stuttering and sweating and all red from the fucking head, they're talking <laughs> nonsense, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. How long will that last? What team are you a part of? Right, but that, then, then that's what I'm worried about, though. It's like I'm not... A good salesman. I'm not, that's not my strength. You're a Jew. It's in your fucking DNA. You just got to <laughs> wake it up. Remember you said you went to Israel? Right, That yeah. the people there would be tremendous salesmen here, that they didn't stop in the street. Tell them what they did to you. They took your Ooh, wallet. They take your ID. Yeah. They, they the, took your wallet. They don't, they, they don't stop. If it's 2 in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes. Thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?